Hello, BookTube. I'm doing a little bit of BookTube catch-up this weekend. Uh, all sorts of events that I want to touch base on just to let you know that I'm doing them. I have been loving them. I've been loving the videos. Uh, and I want to talk today in this video about Classics and Company, which is a year-long event, really uh, interesting thing, by uh, Anna Novella and Mike, Micah Cummins. Where they're picking a different classic for every month of the year and bringing in all sorts of extra people to talk about them. And they've started off with Dangerous Liaisons by Pierre Leclerc. Uh, this is the, as you can see, this is the, uh, the Thomas More translation. This is a, uh, a French classic from 1782. Uh, did really well. It's a, kind of an epistolary novel about uh, the French nobility being scandalous and awful and amoral and manipulative. Note the publication date. Right? 1782 is really close to 1789 when those forces, those exact same social forces became completely unacceptable and a lot of those French nobles died. They lost their heads. <laughs> so this is this is a little bit before that. It was, and it's clearly meant to serve as a gigantic indictment of the debauchery and Manipula manipulation and usuriousness of the upper classes. Specifically here, we have two. We have Marquise Mertoy and Vicomte uh, Valmont. Uh, two, of our, two of our main characters here. Who are... They're both awful. They're both awful people. They... they it's a convoluted, twisted plot where they manipulate an innocent. Not because of, they really, in the end, have any ulterior motive, especially not any material motive, because, but just because they're getting off on destroying innocence. They're thoroughly despicable characters, both of them are. Mertroy especially, I would say. Uh, Valmont, in the end, seems to be, to me, he always strikes me as uh, losing his... He, to me, he seems like, in the, about the two-thirds mark of the book, he loses his menacing quality. Much the same way that Lady Macbeth does, where something seems to go out of the character, and all of a sudden, you, he seems more of a victim. He seems more, more of a victim than anything else. You don't like him, either way. Now, a lot of you will be familiar with this book only from the movie. There was a movie, um, what, 40 years ago, uh, that was really, really good, uh, starring Meryl Streep, sure, but also... Keanu Reeves, <laughs> in, a, in a frilly short and tight. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the movie was really, really good. It has an unbelievably good final scene. Oh, my God. And the final scene has no language. And it has no dialogue at all. It's Meryl Streep doing just two. Oh, no, it's Glenn Close. Sorry, Glenn Close. Doing an amazing, the final, the final dramatic scene in the movie is unbelievably memorable without a word of dialogue in it. Uh, but, and the book doesn't have anything like that. The book is far more fussy than I remembered in the Moore translation. Far more fussy and also far more hyperventilating. This was uh, this was a very interesting reread. I haven't I hadn't read this book. I hadn't thought about rereading it until Classics and Company. I hadn't read it in probably the last time I read an English language translation was when the movie came out. Like a lot of people, I think that's probably when I did. In fact, don't I remember that there was a mass market paperback with the movie poster on it? I think probably I read that. God knows if that was the Moore translation. I don't remember this being any different. Uh, but the, the thing that I noticed in this read-along, I'm encouraging you, I'll leave links to all these events that I'm touching base on. Uh, I, I would encourage you all to read it if you can make the time. I don't know how many of you are, are going to be participating in Classics and Company. It's a nice, loose-jointed structure for a reading event. Uh, but I found it awful soap opera -y. It was It's awful sudsy in a way that I wasn't expecting. I'd, I'd forgotten that element of it. Uh, very much, uh, well, <laughs> very much drama without much physical proof, <laughs> without much physical substance to it. In the end, in the end, I, find my, I found myself wondering, why did I read that? Why am I supposed to care about any of this, right? In in the most famous, the biggest and most famous epistolary novel, Samuel Richardson's Clarissa, Clarissa, you do have something to care about all throughout the book. There is something to care about. Here, not so much. The innocent who is being destroyed is such a non-entity that, I mean, it, this is Mertroy's book and also uh, Valmont's book, and it's not really anybody else's. And that's a mistake. That's a miscalculation on La Close part, because... Without a third node to that triangle, you're left with those two, and you hate them both. <laughs> I, 
I enjoyed the read along. I will continue to do every Classics and Company book, but I and I wanted to touch base, but I I wonder what the rest of you would make of it. If if especially if you're going at it for the first time, very interested to know. As always with these touching bases, if you are uh, doing this event, I'd love to know if you are and what you're thinking of it. I think uh, Classics and Company has a Discord server that's up so that you can talk about this book. I don't know. Discord frightens me. So I, all my attempts to try it have, have frightened me away, even and just a minute at a time. I, I look in and think, oh, I don't even know where to leave a comment, much less how to leave a comment. I have no idea what's going on here. It, this is all cartoons. I know that's not true. I know a lot of people swear by Discord service, so maybe I should try the Classics and Company again, but uh, you know, there are a number of factors involved there. I'm not comfortable with Discord. Uh, I don't know how many people there have read the book or how sensitive I should be about that. And also, there's another factor that enters into Discords of any kind. I bring it up on this channel once in a while. I try not to harp on it too much, but for a large section of booktube, not just British booktubers, for a large section of booktube, I am the devil incarnate. I am someone they want to actively avoid. Never mention his name. Uh, never refer to him. And back out of any event if he's even tangentially connected with it. I don't, in other words, want to hurt Classics and Company by advertising that I'm, by going to a Discord and, and talking with people that I don't want to hurt it that way. Uh, and, you know, in that sense, that consideration of the event, I want to stress here that I know perfectly well what Micah's response to that and Anne Novella's response would be. I bet their response would be identical, which is to hell with people who think that way. You're our friend. And that's fine. I love that. I'm honored by that. But I don't want them hurting their own event either. And it doesn't matter. I mean, a Discord doesn't have to be the, the sum and essence. I'm making this video. And I'll make a video for the next month's chapter as well. But uh, but I wanted I wanted to touch base for Classics and Company for here for Dangerously as well. It was a fun reread. Definitely a fun reread. And of course, when I read the book originally, it never crossed my mind in my furthest imaginings that I would eventually read it on a little piece of plastic, that I would read it as an e-book. <laughs> that was a whole new world, too. And it certainly never crossed Larkola's original, the mind of Larkola's original readers, who ate this book up. They ate it up because of how scandalous it was. And I bet a lot of them were thinking about this book in the immediate aftermath of 1789. I bet they were. I, I'd be willing to bet. I don't know. Probably in French, there's been a lot of studies about critical reception of this book in terms of the French Revolution, but I've never read one. I can't believe it hasn't been done. I can't believe that a lot of people didn't think, well, if that's what they're like, we're better off without them. Very interesting. Very interesting subject. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now, but I'll be back. Thank you, Richard.